Hello, hello. This is Testify Tuesday. I'm Crystal. I'm Kingston. <laughs> this is Kingston. We are here with James and Bree Conley. Hi, guys. Hi. Hey, how's it <laughs> If you are new to Testify Tuesday, this is our segment in Functional Faith, um, where we use empathy, education, and empowerment to get from go from the fruit to the fruit of dysfunction in your holistic spiritual life. Um, today we are talking about marriage and love and intimacy, and we thought that these guys were great people to introduce you to because they are marriage coaches and they are incredible. So let me tell you guys a little bit about who they are. James and Bree, um, they make up the duo behind Rooted Marriage and Family. Together, their faith in God and passion for love and healthy relationships have grown through understanding the journey of designing and building a strong foundation for their marriage and family. They've been married for eight years and, pay, and um, are parents to three beautiful children and are excited to share their experience and insight with other couples. Their qualifications include being certified neuro-linguistic programming life coaches, masters in marriage and family therapy, um, 10 years of collective service industry leadership and experience. Their vision and mission is to inspire other couples to build thriving relationships that last a lifetime. Through coaching and speaking on topics related to marriage and relationships, they strive to help married couples overcome uh, relationship challenges, enrich their marriages, strengthen their family dynamics through intentional living supported by clarity and purpose. That is a bomb bio. Yeah, thank you. That's really good. <laughs> Oh man, well, I'm really excited. Um, I connected with you guys through Camille Dangerfield. That's how I, she was like posting about how much fun she had in y'all's events. And I was like, I gotta get in on that. <laughs> yeah, she's super dope. Dope. yeah, she's so cool. <laughs> yeah, well, can you share with us um, a little bit about how you came to be where you are today as um, marriage and relationship coaches? Yeah, um, I'll, go, I'll go ahead and go. Um, so James and I have been together for 16, about 16 years, um, high school sweethearts, and then we've been married for um, I th eight, eight years. years. I, I never keep counting. <laughs> but we've been married for eight years, and so um, marriage just kind of like happened for us. Like we, it just, it was just kind of like the next thing for us because we had already been together for so long. Yeah. But um, as things happen like they just kept happening having kids and um get into our careers and me staying and becoming a stay-at-home mom and um once we finally like moved to dallas i think we really started becoming more um intentional about the things that we were doing with each other yeah. and the things that we were doing with our kids and also like we yeah. would get questions from other people and people would come to us for advice and people would ask us like what would you do in this situation or the yeah. things that we would share the things that we've gone through and how we overcome them and so um that was how it got started we just kind of felt like it was more of a um, passion and more of a thing that we could actually help other couples and as it evolved we um, started understanding truly what it meant to help other couples and we yeah. feel like it's a real gift from god it's um it's a thing that we like to do it, it helps us grow it makes yeah, us feel does. good it's our way of giving back and sharing what we know and what we've learned with others yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful that's awesome yeah like she said uh it's just we i just love being a blessing to other couples like she said we've We've always got approached by other people and other couples. So we've been through a lot. Obviously, we're uh, high school sweethearts. I don't know all that. But so we've had a lot of years of growing up together and getting to learn each other. So with the having the kids and, you know, moving to Dallas, like we've learned how to, you know, strengthen our bonds and connection with each other because we don't have family here. So that's that's one thing that's helped us and, like, evolve in our, in our marriage. And like I said, we, we really love helping people. Um, so that's the blessing part behind you know, doing this business. Well, that's just awesome. Yeah. Like, I know that, you know, some people think that when you're together for a long time, you can get bored of somebody. <laughs> and y'all have been together for a long time. High school sweethearts? Yes. Yep. 
That's incredible. I go ahead and I had to go ahead and cough her up real quick. You know? Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I think that for us, boring, I don't think it's ever it's been challenging. Yeah, but to say boring, I don't think it's 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 been boring at all. It's just been challenging, but rewarding too. So yeah. yeah. Just find different like creative things to do because yeah. you can get, you know, it can get like steady or complacent or comfortable. Mm -hmm. Um when you get in that 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 state of mind, that's where you start seeing issues. So we try not to get in that state. We try to stay active, yeah. find a new, you know, ideas and strategies to use that help us grow in our marriage. Yeah. Well, go into that a little bit more for us. Like how um share share with us something that you've learned about intimacy along the way, how to keep that um alive and growing in marriage oh goodness so i think honestly intimacy um and this is one of the reasons why we are uh, focusing on that is because intimacy is it encompasses everything yes. morals and values and how you love each other how you receive love and so for us intimacy is actually one of the ways that we don't we don't get bored because we allow ourselves to explore the different things that um I guess that, that <laughs> get us going, yeah. uh, so to speak. And um, another thing is we've grown a lot. Like we have three kids. We're not high school children anymore. Like we are adults now. We know what we want. We know um, how to express what we want. And so intimacy is the root of it all, in, in, in my opinion. Yeah. And I think that's where, um, for us, a lot of our growth comes from. Intimacy is, um, is again, how you love, how you bond, how you connect with each other, how you relate to each other, um, being truthfully um, connected and, and available uh, for your spouse. And That's for us, for us, sorry, for us, I think we figured out how to be available for each other, even mm -hmm. when it's kind of hard to do that, um, to be present. We figured out how to be available for each other because we explored those different parts of ourselves uh, and we brought our, uh, like for me i've brought him into the process of exploring those things by myself. yeah i think uh you know like i said we really focus on intimacy but i think uh, a lot of it have to do with us growing to learn each other because there was a time when i married before like i thought i knew what you liked and you know, i thought i was doing the right things but it was until I, you know, I identified a marker and five love languages, and that's where I've definitely seen the difference take off in that connection with each other. So that's one thing I would say to really focus on if you're you know, looking to keep things spiced up in your marriage and keep that intimacy going. Is really, you know, figure out what it is that your your partner loves, like what's their love language. Because if you don't know that, that'll be the first place I say start because it's gonna make the intimacy that much easier for you guys to connect. For you know, you be doing things for her that she loves, and now the intimacy is just gonna keep and fix that that way. So that's one of the advice I would say to definitely understand your spots of love members because that's gonna help you guys increase your intimacy as well. Yeah. Yeah, I just <laughs> thought that would be helpful. Uh, I, so my, my love language, my love language is I like I like physical touch. Mm -hmm. Um, and she likes acts of service, um, gifts, uh, really all of them except for physical touch. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, but like, I guess like if I'm pursuing, if I'm trying to pursue her and show her that I love her with physical touch, you know, it's not going to be received as well as it would if I were to like make dinner or, yeah. you know, put the dishes away or something like that. Like. She does it, it like if someone were to do that stuff for me, it'd be like, oh, that's tight, you know, cool. <laughs> but I would feel loved, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, it's, it is important to identify that. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's that's definitely deep. I think, I think, like would you say, I think a lot of men are physical touch. I don't want to speak for everyone, but I think that's like the, the main thing for, for us men, and you guys relate so much to us. Sorry, we got a little sorry, dying guys. <laughs> You're good. Here you go, Cardi. We I think people think of one if it wasn't a Tuesday through Thursday between 12 and 5. <laughs> <laughs> if 
but he, he do all this stuff to to plan for them to be so hard. Yeah. The younger stuff comes down, but yeah, like you guys relate so much to us with the with the love languages because, like you said, I'm I'm physical touch, hers is active service. But before, like not knowing what her her love language is, I was doing all physical touch. I was buying. Right. Of course, and hey, baby, top three. No, That's absolutely. You see my love, you know. Right. I'm over here, like, like <laughs> you know, romantic with it, and she's just like her expression. I'm like, well, how are you not happy with what I'm doing right now? <laughs> but like, here's the in that, and that, actually, that's a good way to like um, piggyback off of what you're saying. Um, I had to know what I again, I had to explore myself. I didn't get a chance to do that because yeah. like out the bat, I was like his girlfriend and then I was a mom. And so I, it, to even express to him what I needed or what I what I prefer or what I like or what moves me, I had to explore that myself and I had to know yeah, right. what my own love language is because of course, he he didn't mean to, but he was communicating to me the way that he loves. And so I didn't receive that. And sometimes I even got a little um, uncomfortable, became uncomfortable yeah. with that because I didn't know how to express to him what I needed in that moment or at that time. And so um, that's another thing with love languages. You really are communicating what you need and what you prefer to your spouse. But also um, there's a way that you communicate that so that it can be received. Yeah. Yeah. yeah which kind of ties in the conversation makes it, makes it come full circle because you know what what you're talking about right there the freedom the, not only the freedom to explore yourself but then on top of that the uh the trust to then communicate to james what is it you know that that all comes back to intimacy as well yes yeah, so like, when we think of intimacy i know i a lot of times when i think of intimacy i just think about sex you know yep. a lot of people do they think sex <laughs> <laughs> and that's, is. and that, that is, you know, that is intimate. That that is an intimate thing. But intimacy, you know, intimacy for me is is vulnerability. You know, being vulnerable and opening yourself up, not just sexually, but uh, emotionally and mentally, and all that as well. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's a big point. Is like, yeah, intimacy. Like it starts before the bedroom. Like, Absolutely. It's, it's it's more like stuff that you do. Prior to the bedroom, that you know, that a lot of people think it's all about sex, but they don't see the little extra steps you do to get to the bedroom, like right. the, the love notes or doing acts of service around the house, like maybe doing the the, the laundry for wifey because I know she likes a nice clean house. Like it's just those small little things like that that take your you know your relationship a long way. I mean, that's where you're gonna see the the vibe and the intimacy. Like yeah, so, yeah. I think so would you guys say that it's possible for a couple to be having a lot of sex but not be intimate? Absolutely. Yep. Cause that's less. Yep. That's <laughs> in yeah. my opinion, so less. in my opinion, that's that is um, that's less. I think that, um, and I hope that that didn't come up wrong. But in my opinion, that is, <laughs> in my opinion, it's less because um, you know when when you are brought together and you're united together, you're united together for a purpose. And if that is your purpose, what exactly are you doing? Do you understand what I'm saying? So it's like, for me, when we came together, actually, I feel like we didn't understand what our purpose was. Yeah. And I don't think that you can get that purpose and really connect and vibe with each other until you are intimate with each other, until you are able to share your deepest, darkest secrets and be vulnerable and be emotional and yeah. just share. And I yep. think truly that's where your purpose comes from and that's how you understand who you are together. Um, I think that when you are just having sex, it it distracts you from what your purpose is. Yeah. I agree. And I mean the this to be real, like the sex is way better when you're way more when intimate, intimate yeah. with your with your spouse. Like <laughs> right. if we have like earlier on you can just be having sex and you know, whatever. And there's really no feelings, but it's like when you're intimate and you truly found that connection with your spouse, it just I don't know, it just makes things much more better. It's, it's just a crazy. I can't explain it, but for those who you know are really intimate with your spouse, you know the difference between just having sex and making love with your spouse. Right. Mm -hmm. So let me let me take the question up a notch. Do you think that it's possible for a couple to actually use sex as a barrier or an escape? to avoid intimacy? Mm. I think so. I think in a way, which is 
um, really good. That's a really awesome question. I think in a way, um, I think in a way, yes. And I really honestly feel like a lot of it is because of what we're surrounded by in society. And really that's all that we see is sex, sex and connotations. Yeah. And a woman is supposed to look this way and yep. do these things. Her body's supposed to be able to, you know, do certain things. And there's just this expectation, in my opinion, that is very skewed. And I think that, um, we can kind of get caught in um, in the sexual aspect of the relationship, which deters us from focusing on the other areas. And um, and I think that we can definitely use that as a way to uh, to kind of dismiss what's really important. Yeah. Um, I think that sex is truthfully it's it is meant for you to connect. It's truly meant for you to be um, connected with each other. And I think that when you are not when you're connected only sexually, it's um, there's so much more to that. It's it's not rewarding after at, after some point. It is not rewarding. There's so much more yeah. than just the physical act of sex. Sometimes we're just having sex, like, and there's no meaning or behind it. It's like you're kind of feel like you're using each other. It can become a chore. Yeah, and, you know. Yeah. And, and that's not a that's not the place that you want to be in. And truthfully. Um, I felt that way in the beginning because yeah. that's really what it was. It was just yeah. Yeah. come home. I he expected that's you know, he expected me to do what he needed me to do and take care of the kids and that's it. Sorry, our dogs in the back. No, you're good. So yeah. Um, so yeah, to answer your question, I definitely think so. I definitely think so. And I and I think that if we don't um if we don't have focus and purpose and go into it with a mindset of really being intentional, it, we can get lost in, in the yeah. sexual aspect of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Thank you. I know that like in our relationship, there was our, our relationship was so hostile in the beginning mm -hmm. that it, what it did become that obligation kind of type of thing because there wasn't, we didn't know how really to cultivate, it was hard to cultivate intimacy when there was so much hostility, right? Mm -hmm. So how would how would you guys say that for that couple that is maybe just coming out of, maybe in that season where their marriage isn't really healthy, there's a lot of um, resentment built up or maybe um, they, they, they've moved past that but like, for instance, for us, we, that was something we had, we just recently kind of was able to like acknowledge or see like, oh, they're still healing, even though, you know, that was in the past and our relationship is in a healthier place now. This is just within a matter of weeks ago. We were like, oh, okay. Like there's still some healing and stress that is yet to be built up. It just hasn't, there hasn't been that much time, you know, in between. And so, like, we're still having to, like, be intentional about our, so what are some, like, practical steps? You, like you said, um, building intimacy, you said, like, being just available to one another. That was really good. Because that is something that, like, we're, you know, especially as parents um, and, and, you know, business owners, like, it's time is a factor. <laughs> just taking the time and being available. So what are some other things that, like, people who are just getting started or who have maybe um that's what you want to call it, healing that needs to take place in their in their marriage that they can do to start cultivating intimacy, more more intimacy and love. One thing that comes to mind for me, um, we had an incident in our marriage that um, I can't remember how long ago it was. It was probably about three or four years ago, and it really caused like hostility. Like it really okay. caused um, a lot of. It tension, honestly, yeah. it was tension, but it almost caused us to um, to want to separate. Mm -hmm. And that was because um, there were things built up and things that we we didn't know were there. So for me, what worked was we checked in often with each other. Yeah. We knew, first of all, what we did was we gave ourselves the space. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes we need to give ourselves allow ourselves give ourselves permission to even be in an emotional state and process what we're going through and process what we feel to even be able to communicate it to our spouse 
Um, so I think once we give ourselves the time to process, then we can bring our spouse into that and begin working on the healing aspect. Um, but one thing that we did do was, I think healing is like, it takes a while. It's not just, you know, it's not an process of 24 hours, especially when things are causing you to feel resentment, hostile, and there's a lot of tension. So we checked in often. We checked in with each other as often as we needed to. I would say weekly, if possible. How are you feeling? Do you have anything on your mind? Is there anything that you want to share with the uh, share with me? Um, it's kind of just being like vulnerable with each other, really. It's yeah. kind of like expressing any, any thoughts, whether how you feel or not, just letting it out on the table. So we kind of talk about those issues. It's going to feel uncomfortable at first, but uh, you know, it's like the more we kept doing it, the easier it was able to come out and we can connect and kind of resolve certain stuff. Yeah. Um, and it, and it, it doesn't have to be through um, verbal communication. Yeah, you can grab a notebook if you need to write out, you know, hey, this is how I'm feeling today, and then offer that notebook off to your spouse. Allow them to read it, and then you respond. Um, one Another thing that we, we <laughs> and Jason's trying to get to him for me, um, I'll let him explain it. But another thing that we did was we called a meeting. Yeah. I would say uh, the call. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. Yeah, so the, the, the call and meeting was pretty uh been pretty impactful for us. Like pretty pretty much what you do is we have like a, a situation um where you guys, you know, like a disagreement. Pretty much one spouse may may be like, Hey, hey, I need to call a meeting. Like this meeting simply is it's a five minute meeting. You set a set a date, a time that you guys want to have it, and during that five minutes there's no interruptions or anything. So the way it works, the first person who ever's having a problem, let's say I'm having a problem and I have an issue, I'm the one that called a meeting. So I'm a immediately attack the problem I'm like, hey, you know, this is the situation that happened, you know, this is how it made me feel. I don't like when this happens, and then that my minute's up, right? So the next minute, and during this first minute, like the other spouse, you're not able to disrupt it. Anymore. So let your let your partner talk and then you're gonna be terminated. So the next minute is for you know the next boss Bree may be like she may respond back to that how how the situation made her feel. And then after that you take a, a minute for both of you guys don't say anything and just kind of let your, your thoughts happen. And then that fourth minute it's gonna come back to me or I'm gonna apologize um about the situation and kind of make ways and lead ways to like how we're gonna move forward past it and then the last minute it's her doing the same thing and after that five minutes is up you squash it you don't break that situation up again it doesn't come back it's dead and right from the marriage so we call that the five minute meeting and that's been very helpful for us yeah, that's, that's that's tight. we gotta do that go yeah that's right <laughs> we might need to do a 10 minute meeting because we both talk we a lot, lot. <laughs> like, that's like, i mean five minutes or 20 minutes yeah. so and I think the the um, the real focus behind that is to bring resolution in. When we have high emotions and there's disagreements, a lot of the times we're communi we're talking to each other, but we're not communicating. Right. And so this um, method allows you to communicate, but also resolve the the, the issue um, and have more of a controlled solution focused, yeah. yep, and, and controlled um, conversation. Yeah. yeah. Only a lot of times people are just want to they just you know, cut each hands. other off and <laughs> face each other a lot too. Yeah, like my hair's not doing too hard, but you never let me talk. But I'll just cut her off. Interrupting. Yeah. So this is, has helped us tremendously, you know, overcome like those type of arguments. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So just to just to recap on that, if you feel tension, if there's something that happened that that has a person in the relationship that feels upset, then that person can call a meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a five minute meeting that you schedule. Yep. And the person that called the meeting then spends a minute going first, kind of communicating how they feel about the situation. And then the person that hears that for the other person hears that for a minute, doesn't say anything, but then they get a minute to communicate how they feel. And then yep. there's a minute break, third minute is a break. You don't say anything, you just process. And then fourth minute person who called the meeting says, Hey, you know, I'm sorry. I understand how you feel. And the, other partner does the same thing on the fifth minute yep. yeah, with the resolution and a yeah. lot of that too is um, using i statements 
I feel, I think it made me feel like, and yeah. then um, also re, um, rephrasing. So I heard you say that you didn't like when I, so just rephrasing, just to make sure that you heard what he said with Brett. Yeah. So, right. so using, using I statements, just for clarity, for those who may not know, using I statements as opposed to what? As opposed to you. Yeah. Learned about it. It was like, all right, let's try it. But it's like it actually works. It's crazy. Boo. Like, and 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 it does take some time to wrap your mind around it because when you think about five minutes, you're like, that's not enough time for me to say what I need to say. But when you think about five minutes and how you're communicating, it's that's plenty. That's yeah. plenty of time. It's plenty. Of time. And it's crazy because yeah, you pretty much you use your phone, but like when you get to that point where you, you can start sensing when your spouse has a problem or you can just kind of feel that energy. I don't know. That's just how we are. Oh yeah. I can just sense when like wife is like not here or she's having like some negative energy around. I'm like, hold on, man, let's, let me call me and I need to figure out what's going on. And then simply I called a little, I did this like a, a few weeks ago. Um, and I literally called a meeting. I set my timer for the one minute went and after that we was good like yeah. it's, it's it's a powerful little tool that a lot of couples can use to overcome a lot of issues yeah you have to yeah. be willing. you definitely have to be willing yeah. it works that is powerful because we you know we we are like marriage conference junkies so since we got engaged i was like we going to this marriage conference <laughs> <laughs> because my church promoted it and, and I was like whenever I get married like it's if we're going we're going and so we were engaged we went every we've gone to at least one conference every year did we go we yeah even last year because it's before the pandemic everything shut down and there was an, an exercise introduced there that kind of reminds me of this but this takes it to a whole nother level that was just like they said they literally would have like a floor tile that like was left over from when they remodeled their kitchen or something like that and they were like, here, you have the floor. <laughs> and they would pass the towel to each other. And it was like, while that person had the floor, then the other person came to talk. And then they would pass the towel back and forth. We tried that. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> but we so we talk too much. And we are both very um, passionate people. Yes. OK, so <laughs> you wow. know, we loud. And so it really didn't work because while he's sitting there talking about me, <laughs> I'm saying something. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just did it too. So I feel like this would really help us to reel it in. And yeah. I've never heard of this before either. This is new. So I think this is really help for people like us to reel it in because then you have to be concise and strategic about what you say and make sure that you're only using I statements. So I'm sorry if that's on our end. I don't know if it is or not. But <laughs> Daughter playing on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like she's winning. She's doing good. <laughs> we had a play like, y'all gonna do this? We found dinner, like lunch, like, y'all gonna do this? And now, like, it's okay. <laughs> Don't worry about it, man. But I know that in, in that minute of silence, that is just so wise to have that built into it. I know I would need that minute to be praying, like, Lord, help me. <laughs> yeah. This piece over me, God. You don't even know what I will say because we haven't even had a meeting yet. I do you know. know. I already know. And yeah. so, especially to go I'm to about be to call able a to meeting based on that, right? Stop there. it. To be, yes. about to, <laughs> <laughs> to be able to shift and move into now. I'm sorry, you know, for this. Mm -hmm. and to be able to have that right frame of mind. That is very, very hard. Um, so well, I really apologize. I didn't. I didn't know that she was going to be. No, it's fine. Um, but that that does lead into uh, my next question. So I know I would be praying in that minute of silence. Yeah. <laughs> so what are some are there any spiritual um, practices or exercises that um, y'all have found beneficial in your marriage? Honestly, outside of prayer, um, we do a lot of um, sermons like Obviously, we do our normal Sunday sermon, but we do a lot of sermons um, during the week, too, like YouTube. Uh, YouTube. We love YouTube. So um, James does, well, 
before he left, because he's switching jobs. So before he left his job, he did a lot of, um, on his way to work, he would listen to um, motivational podcasts, podcasts YouTube videos, sermons. Um, and then, like, one thing that he'll do is he'll text me. Now, just to be honest, um, and when I say he'll text me, like, he'll text me, like, hey, this, you know, this is what I pray for. I pray for us. Um, but to be honest with you, that was one thing that I felt like we, I, I wasn't feeling a connection spiritually with him. Yeah. Um, I just didn't feel like we were, like, I didn't feel connected. And I don't know what the feeling, I don't know why, but I just did not feel that. I feel like as a husband, you can you can um, do interception, like you can inter, intersect or intercede for your spouse, if that's the word. And I didn't feel that from James. And so I communicated that to him. So now we do. Um, we have a book called, sorry, we have a book called Jesus Calling. That gives you a um, like a devotional daily of um, basically where it's like God is truly talking to you in your day. And so we both share that with each other. Sometimes I'll text it to him um, what the, the devotion is for the day. And then we allow ourselves to say, oh, babe, that was good, or to sit and, and reflect on that. Um, but outside of prayer, motivational sermons or podcasts and then just the and i think it's introspection introspection mm -hmm. um, uh, <laughs> sorry um I, that's what we do and that's what really helps us especially during this whole covid thing because with our move we were already trying to grasp onto a church and get a feel for a new church home but with um, covid that's been a little bit more difficult for us so we've just made it work how it works. And Jesus calling is the truth. Yeah, and, then, right. and then praying for each other is the truth. Mm -hmm. um, James, is, James is a little bit better at it than I am. <laughs> I'll be praying. I'll be praying some nice and still just. Uh, and I'll fall asleep. I'll, I'll, I'll be tired. Um, but that's basically that's it. That's really it. Um, I, I really feel like prayer is a good place to start. I really feel like. Um, Knowing that he prays for me and intercedes for me in that way is awesome because there are times I, I don't have it. And the fact that he has it for me is beautiful and the same for him. When he doesn't have it, I can feel him and, and he knows that I'm not feeling it on my own, I'm feeling it for God. And, that, and that's awesome. So. I think that was big um, when she when she told me, like, she was like, she would challenge me sometimes. Like, man, like, do you, do you actually pray for me? Like, I'd be like, like, yeah, I pray for all of us, but apparently she's like, no. I mean, I do actually like, pray for me. It hit me like, um, damn, like, no, I probably should start praying, like, in particular with the you and stuff that you're dealing with, and not like combining with the family and things and everything. So once she was able to, you know, dig deep and tell me that stuff, like, actually, that was actually helpful for me as a husband. Because now I'm not like, okay, I really need to pray for my wife. She's telling me she's been something like this spiritually. It's my job as a husband to take the lead and really pray for her. And there's different ways to do it too. Like uh, I got creative with the one day on the way to work. Um, I sent the I actually did like a little voice prayer where I um, I recorded my prayer like just talking to my phone, but I had it like typed it. And I sent her like a, a, a note on the way to work. Like, hey babe, this is a prayer for the day. Help me, you know, have a blessed day, you know, and you know, and it's kind of uplifting. And to just to have my whole prayer when I pray, so she can always refer back to that number that I sent her. So, just getting creative, like obviously praying together, but finding different ways to share, like, a, a note or to do like a voice on your social media. So, that's another one thing I would say, it's a pretty helpful thing that's kind of helped us see the guys live on the group. Yeah, I love that. That's great. Yeah, that's it's awesome. not easy to, I don't know, to practice spirituality together. It's like, it's something that is very individual. Like, and it, it's, it's so, it's, it is like another level of intimacy too. Yeah. Yeah, it's it like opening up another part or aspect or dimension of who you are. Um, and it's a part of us that even we forget about sometimes. <laughs> It's hard to kind of know how to how to share it. Were you going to say something? No. Okay. Are there any um, books 
that you guys recommend that you found um, have enriched your marriage? Well, um, Jesus, Jesus calling. That's that's been really good for us. Yeah, um, good. But we're not honestly we're not book people. Um, now we have done. Uh, I believe it's called His and Her Needs. We have that yeah, book, that and then Five Love Languages. Um, yeah, right. Pastor Todd, uh, Michael Todd. Oh, Love, love Goals. Oh, yeah. Marriage Goals. Marriage Goals. Marriage Goals by um, Pastor Michael Todd. Oh right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So. A lot of the books that I've been reading have been personal, um, mindset, um, goal oriented, um, healing, forgiveness. Those have been my books. I love Yana Van Zandt. Um, so I'm reading a lot of her um, self-help books right now. And um, I really feel like kind of like what you were saying about spiritual intimacy and how that is a personal walk. That's kind of what I've been doing. <clears throat> I think I'm realizing that my 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 spirituality is individual to his, and so and, and is his relationship with God is is individual. Yeah. That is his thing, and so um, I think that also with us helping other people and other married couples, it's important for us to develop and to heal and to work on ourselves. And so that's yeah. where I'm at. Um, I love listening to uh, YouTube videos and podcasts. That's mainly where I, I'm at right now. Yeah. Huh? I said, what's your favorite podcast? Um, I Well, again, I have, um, I do have a lot of podcasts. Mine are mainly like, um, uh, I can't think of one right now. Um, but like, boss I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, like, uh, entrepreneur woman entrepreneurs um there's one and i cannot remember the name it's like boss ladies or something like that and um it's just a good way to um to kind of get me going in the morning also i've been listening to um camille on clubhouse yeah good morning i listen to her as well and i try to catch her when i can but hers has been really good too because she talks a lot about um Honestly, she talks about everything. She's talked about relationships, friendships, um, self-help, self-development. And so that's been really good for me, too. Yeah, this morning she was talking about gratitude. And I was like, I got to start waking up for these. <laughs> yeah, yeah gratitude one is uh, that's powerful. That's something I'm, I'm actually moved off to making a list for. Because sometimes you you lose you know sight of like what you're thankful for because you're so caught up on all the negative stuff. That you forget like what God's blessed you with and like your gifts and like, what you have right in front of you, right in front of you. So that's powerful to gratitude. But for my podcast, you guys listen to a lot of uh it's listen to a lot of T D Jakes, Thurman's, um, Stephen Furtick. I'm a big fan of him. I um, mean his podcast sermons so because they usually really resonate with me with whatever I'm going through that day. Um there's a there's a lot of one. There's another one I listen to. It's one you actually suggest for me. Um, I think it's called Real Men Connect. Um, it's another. It's like a Christian one, but talk about a lot of different, you know, from marriages, from personal development, everything. So I'm not really like a big reader, like open a book type. I kind of get bored doing it, um, unless it's like really intriguing. But I'd rather listen because I can. I learn more by listening. Yeah. Right. And we're on the go a lot too, like with the kids and stuff. So it's kind of easier for us to just put it on TV, on YouTube, and turn it on and have it go. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, that's how I made it through school was audiobooks. I can't. Yeah. I, I'm I, at this point. I'm adverse to turning pages. Like. <laughs> I know. It's just like it's hard. It's like. <laughs> oh no! It's like relaxing to me. Like I just, I'll find myself reading it. I just like get tired. I'm like what the heck? I just don't call for that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of, that's just how it is for me though. But. Well, are there is there anything you guys have coming up um that you'd like to share with us so that we can connect with you? Um for everybody who's watching this to connect with you after this. Yeah, we actually got our uh scroll out third uh, marriage game night. Um we're gonna have it uh February twenty seventh at eight PM, so it's a Saturday. Uh, so it gives you guys time to you know, kick back, music out of um cocktails and conversation at the end, play a couple games, but it's just really a good time for other couples 
uh, to connect with each other and just meet other other like minded couples and just talk about a lot of marriage stuff and things that we deal with in our marriages. So it's been a blessing like the last couple of times I've like eight or eight or yeah, eight about eight couples. or nine couples yeah. and it's virtual. So we, we do it via Zoom and um, it really even though it's Zoom it feels like we yeah, all know each place. other, like we're all in the room. So it's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, we uh it's in our bio um on our Facebook uh, link tree so you can get access there. But yeah, it's definitely a good time and it's also ways to build intimacy too. So yeah. we give you guys a little little scenarios, little things to do, advice and I ain't gonna get it too long, but it's gotta join us um so you can get that kind of feeling. That's cool. <laughs> I just don't look like don't yeah, I, I ain't gonna get it. So you just gotta <laughs> just gotta be a much. part of it so you can get that experience. But that's that's Saturday night. Yep, eight yeah. o'clock. We usually try to keep it like two hours, but sometimes because it's so good, like it usually goes over. But everyone's kind of chilling and just hanging out. Yeah, yep. so it's, yeah. it's a good vibe. Camilla will be on there, so yeah, yeah. I've seen multiple people uh, post about it, so <laughs> it looks like it's so so much fun. I, are we gonna do it? I mean, it sounds good to me. Oh, you need to sign yeah. us up. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of fun. So where all can we find you guys on the internet? You guys are on Facebook and Instagram, right? Yes. Yep. Clubhouse. <laughs> Clubhouse. Yeah, we're on Clubhouse too, but we haven't we haven't really uh we did a couple of um Clubhouse with some of our our um, partners that we we partner with, but we're gonna get into eventually. Right now we're mainly focusing on Facebook and then uh Instagram and starting to build our YouTube up as well. And they have a super fun Facebook group. So if you guys have gotten value out of this. And oh, my gosh. Wow, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> they must have got value. <laughs> if you've gotten value out of this interview, please let us know in the comments. You can ask any questions for um, Bria James as well. And we'll make sure that they're able to answer. And um, yeah, just let us know how you, um, what you took away from this interview and connect with them. They have a Facebook group and they are, as you can tell, an amazing couple. Are we able to tag the Facebook group? I think so, maybe, yeah. yeah. What's the name of the Facebook group in case we can't tag it? It's Rooted Marriage and Family. Yeah. Rooted Marriage and Family. Uh, yeah. Well, it's Rooted Marriage and Family group on Facebook. Um, but if you wanted to connect with us on Instagram, it's um, rooted marriage and family, and then we both have our personal uh, pages on Facebook too. Which I'm cool. on there. I'm Bria Still, and, and then um, mine's uh, Conley Boy Thirty Two on Instagram. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so so much for joining us. I know that we've benefited from this interview, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I good. I trust that plenty of other people will too. And make sure y'all call that mean, all right? What you call say? It, call that meeting. No, I, I I put on the calendar while we talk. Stop man. You <laughs> out. I I'm just kidding. I did. <laughs> but thank you, thank you, thank you. And for everybody who's watching, um, we hope you were blessed. You can go in peace and presence.